Hey, thank you again for joining me for this service. I don't know if you remember, but we talked about two weeks ago before Mother's Day um, and the week before that, so it might be about three weeks now. I started a series on deception. All right, so deception. What is it? You know, um, many people think that they're not deceived when they are deceived so we're gonna clarify that today okay so the la in the last couple of weeks I talked about um, about deception and we learned that the enemy wants to distract us or deceive us into thinking that God's Word is not trustworthy just like remember Adam and Eve he didn't attack them he didn't attack creation he didn't even attack God he attacked it he attacked God's Word did God say Wow you know that that's the first question in the Bible if I'm not mistaken some of you might be smarter than I am so that's from me okay so God wants us to understand his word but the enemy wants us to think that God's word is not true not trustworthy he wants us to believe that God wants to enslave us to do his will and he doesn't care about us as individuals and when this happens he not God or you ask Jesus in your heart is enthroned the enemy is enthroned in your heart or my heart when we realize that what he's doing oh me and I not realize what he's doing he wants us to question God's Word he wants to think that God wants to enslave us right and in doing so then he captures our heart so his whole plan is to have us think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think right and feel used by God and in our deception there is envy strife and like James puts it this way for where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work what happens we open the door to all the stuff that the enemy can do in our lives that's James chapter 3 and verse 16 should be easy to remember like John 3 16 right so um, the New Living Translation puts it this way for whoever or no for wherever wherever sorry for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition there will you find disorder and evil of every kind she that uh, evil of every kind that doesn't leave a limit to what kind of evil there is you know making us fall is not the enemy's plan it's not his greatest weapon. It is having us veer off of God's plan for our lives. It is what he wants to accomplish because if we're off of God's plan, then we're on our own plan, which leads to destruction. That's what the Bible says. Or we're on his plan. He just wants another trophy, another hash mark on his collection. Don't be deceived. He does not care about you. He only cares about himself. So that's why he uses deception. So his goal is to make us like him into his image. What is that? A rebellious, sinful, God-mocking person. And that's what happens when we, when we question God's word, when we... Um, well, you can question God's word, but men just say, no, God doesn't know what he's talking about. That's what the enemy wants. So, so where do we go from here? Okay, this study is, I don't know how long this study is going to take, but it's going to take a long time. Not, well, we'll see. Okay, because deception takes on many faces. For instance, you are expecting someone, your spouse, your child, your parent, your friend, your co-worker, your sibling, your fellow Christian, your club member, 
your coach, your mentor, your teacher, or someone else to do something for you, or at least you expected them to do it, or um, you expected them, you expected something from them, and then they totally just drop the ball, right? What is the way that you think? Do you think, oh, that's okay, they just forgot, oh, that's okay, they are going through a lot, oh, that's okay, I don't need the money that they were going to give me, or the recommendation they were going to give me, or the help they were going to give me, or whatever, you can add to that list. That's okay, is that our thinking? No, this is what we think. How dare they forget, right? How dare they think it's not important? How dare they be so insensitive? How dare they leave me hanging? How dare they? <laughs> you know, and not being nice. Some people might use other words, right? So, some people say, well, it's just natural for us to think like that, negative. And this is where the problem begins. That's why the Bible tells us that we need to renew the spirit of our mind. You and I have a battlefield that needs to be prepared for battle. It is a place where if we are not careful, just think about this, we will see, we won't see deception coming if we're not prepared. It is also a place where we are to prepare, or if we're not prepared, we won't overcome whatever the enemy schemes is against us. This battlefield, my friend, is your, nope, nope, it's your heart. And I, I know there's books out there called The Battlefield of the Mind. That is a battlefield, but the number one battlefield is your heart you will find that the most valuable part of your possessions, of what you possess, is not your good looks. Although, let me see. Oh, some of you looking good out there, right? It's not your talents, or your abilities, or your stuff, or your strengths, or your skills, or even your position in life. It is your heart. For it is the center of who you are and what you do. That's what Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 says. In the NIV, or the New International Version of the Bible, it says this, Above all else, guard your heart. Protect that thing. Guard If you had a shield and a sword, maybe that's what the fruit of the Spirit, or was that the weapons of our warfare are, right? So, uh, above all else, it says, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. From where? Your heart. The New Living Translation puts it this way. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. The New King James Bible puts it this way. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Or we could say of your life, right? There are a number of studies that have showed the connection between your heart and the decisions you make with your brain okay I have said and I said I have said since I can't find the exact reference I used it before but I can't find it look through my notes looked on the web can't find it so I have said that it is your heart that is the decision maker and not your brain you might think well, my heart doesn't have any cells in it. just think about it okay you know like when you're you're ready to do something. You just get this feeling. You can't understand what that is, but you get a check in your, and we might say our spirit. A lot of times it's in our heart. I, you know, our heart just doesn't feel good about that. My mom used to say if we did something wrong, um, your heart no saw. <laughs> Let me translate. That's pigeon for, doesn't your heart hurt when you do something wrong? Yes, your brain is the control center of all your organs and it keeps everything in rhythm. But more and more, they, scientists and doctors, are finding out that mental illness has a lot to do, or a lot more to do, with the condition of your heart and not your brain. 
Wow. You know, they agree that someone can die of a broken heart, but they don't know how. You know, they don't know what happens. It may be because your heart is the dominant organ and not your brain. Wow. It's like Arsenio Hall used to say, hmm. <laughs> Something to think about. Or like the Bible says, Selah. Pause and meditate on that. You know? Have you ever been frustrated, angry, irritated, or discouraged? Even though you know what the Bible has to say about these things? Why? Because knowledge is not understanding. Let me say that. Knowledge is not understanding. And information is not the same as healing or obeying. Wow. I could do a whole series just on that. Knowing what to do is not enough to make you do it. If your heart is not in it. Wow. Knowing what to do and it just... That is why the enemy wants to conquer your heart. That is why the enemy wants to confuse you. That is why the enemy wants you to be double-minded. Looking this way, looking up. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I? Not knowing what to do and being confused, right? That is why deception is so cunning, so slick, so smooth, so attractive, so distracting, and so anti Christ or anti Bible or anti God or anti righteousness. Uh, ole pono, no righteousness. Hawaiian, right? Okay. We need to keep God's Word hid in our hearts so that we will not sin against God. Let me put it this way. Hide His Word in your heart that you might not be deceived. Because His, His Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. You know, these, I got these, you know, these infomercials that come up and they have these flashlights and when half the neighborhood lights up. <laughs> That's the way God's Word is. There's no shadows in God's Word. Okay? We deceive ourselves when we think we can do it just by our knowledge. But John, writing to the early church in his first epistle, in verse 8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. What sin? James goes on to say this. I'm not going to list sins. But James goes on in chapter 4, in verse 17, he says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. I was going to throw in an example here, but that's okay. We'll go on. Okay? We have no excuse because our heart knows when we sin. In fact, our whole body responds to our sin. Our eyes get wide. Our pupils dilate. Right? We start to sweat. So, like, some of them is like, bite the nails, get all nervous. Right? Our heart races. Our brain freaks out. And who knows what else happens with all the chemical reactions in our body because of our sin. How do you think a lie detector works? That's right. It detects any abnormal rhythm or spike in action or reaction you are having to the questions they ask. Have you heard anyone say that I have a thankful brain? <laughs> no! Everyone has to say, I have a thankful heart. Because that's what this center, I love you with all my, you tell somebody, I love you with all my brain. They're like, oh boy, that's limited. I think they said Albert Einstein used like 10% of his brain. If we used 100%, some of us be dangerous. <laughs> okay, hear what Paul writes to the church in Rome. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God, nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Wow. That's Romans chapter 1 and verse 21. Okay? 
Without a thankful heart, or a heart set on God's Word, which keeps us thankful, we will begin a slippery slope to not glorifying God, neither giving Him thanks, which leads to futile or vain or dark thinking. And our foolish hearts become darkness or get filled with darkness. Stay hungry for God's Word. Stay thirsty for God's Word. Stay thankful for God's Word. And if you say, why? I can't keep up. Ask God to help you. He's in, and the Holy Spirit is an ever-present help in time of need. I think that's Psalms 46.1. I'll put it in there. Okay? And the darkness of deception cannot fight the light of God's Word and who He is. John, in the in Revelation chapter 1, verse, starting with verse 10, says, On the Lord's day I saw in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, Write a scroll, what you see, or write in a scroll, or on a scroll, <laughs> what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned, John said, to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair of his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing water. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. Get this now. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. Wow. You know, when they said they have a, I think it's called a Lahaina moon. When the, when, not moon, or sun. I don't, you know, when the sun's directly above you, then there's no shadow. You look down, you can't even see a shadow because you, your the light is right above. That's the way the Word of God is when it comes in. There's no shadows. No shadows. And he goes on, he said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Man, this guy had seen some miracles. And when he saw Jesus in this resurrected form, he fell as dead. Remember the Apostle Paul? When he was on his road to Damascus? This is probably the Jesus that he saw. Paul fell off his horse. Donkey or Tesla or whatever he was driving that day. Okay? Then he placed his right hand on me and he said, and when you're in the light, this is God says what God says to you. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive forever and ever. Woohoo! Deception will try to make you believe you need more knowledge, schooling, classes, education, or self-help books to fill you up with knowledge and man's ideas. You know, deception will do that. Not that learning is bad, but David had it right when he wrote this in Psalms 119, starting with verse 9. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my brain. No, Heart, he says, do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's all about the heart, my friends. All about the heart. That's what the Word of God does. It works from the inside out. Who is sitting on the throne of your heart? Think about it, right? Deception desperately wants it. Don't give in. Let's pray. Father, thank you that when 
We got saved. You brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light that we might show forth the praises of you. Oh boy, that's awesome. Lord, so help us to continue to live in the light, Lord, and not be deceived like Jesus told his disciples. The first thing he told them, don't be deceived. So help us to, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, coming back next week with another, whew, this has been revelation to me. I hope it's been to you. All right, so, hi, Mom, Brother Keone. Thank you all for watching. Aloha.